this afternoon, I will first talk about how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then how to use it, the infilling of the Holy Spirit for evangelism and raising up the spiritual life of people. And uh, so this is all very important. I think there's not enough time to talk about fighting the devil. That's tomorrow. Um, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. How to be that any time we open our heart, we can experience the Holy Spirit. Now I want to say this. In opening the Spirit and the heart to God, usually it works better with quiet uh, music and prayer. Now in loud music will get you excited. So usually in the place of worship there is loud and excited music in the beginning. And then later there will be more soft singing from the heart like Yes, Jesus loves me is speaking from the heart. Jesus, I love you. I bow down before you. So it's from the Spirit, worshiping God. Now it's, it's possible when loud music, but I, I encourage you that in the last part will be more quiet music to enter into a heart of loving God and also searching of the heart. The, the, the excited music is, the exciting music is good for exciting the spirit and relaxing. But we need the quiet time with God that we enter the presence of God. Okay, now I talk about how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. How to continually be filled with the Holy Spirit. Number one, you can bring this down. How to, now let me remind you again, you need to, give the homework tomorrow. If not, we won't give any certificate. We have to have the homework. From the first day about balancing the grace and the law of God, and how to speak words of grace and the law to the people. And also today would be about the Holy Spirit and how to uh, use the power of the Holy Spirit for evangelism. How to do evangelism with the power of the Holy Spirit and how to raise people's spiritual life up with the Holy work of the Holy Spirit. Now here we talk about how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. First is repent. Repent and turn away from all sins. And don't ever think that secret sins can hide from the eyes of God. Even little sinful thought. For instance, Someone looks at a beautiful girl or a handsome man and then have lust inside. And every time the person shows up, the lust will come out. That this will destroy the relationship with God. That, God doesn't like that. When a person does that, it destroys his spiritual life and destroys his ministry. And all everything he does, we're building on the foundation of Jesus Christ. It's like building a wall, building a house. You don't build it one day and tear it down the other day. If we stay in sin of anger, frustration, even when the person has offended us, if we get angry, it will take away our the blessings of God and take away the relationship with God. And if people steal from the money of God or are not faithful in giving or are not faithful in the responsibilities, all this will uh, affect our relationship with God. And the infilling of the Holy Spirit is something more advanced. This infilling of the Holy Spirit is a high level of relationship with God. For instance, when we see Moses go to Mount Sinai, and he was there for 40 days and nights, he did not eat or not drink. And uh, he could see the glory of God that when he came down, his face was shining. Mm. This is a high level of relationship with God. If Moses commits sin, he cannot maintain this relationship. So it's very important, not only repent. Some people say, I repent already. But we also turn away the sin and hate the sin. Now some people say, how do we 
turn away the sin? How do we stop the sin? The main thing is we realize sins are destructive. When we sow to the flesh, from the flesh will bring destruction. That's Galatians 6, 8. There's always destruction. Even when people abandon to us, we get angry. There is destruction when we get angry. So even when people offend us, it's their power. I don't have to take their offenses and don't have to get angry. I don't have to take it personally. So any sin, as Jesus said, that um, sin no more, that's the worst thing will happen to you. That's John 5, 14. And also Jesus said, there was a person that a demon was driven out. But the demon went away and could not find a place of rest, to rest. And then he came back and he brought seven more, more fierce demons that entered a person's life. Because the person hasn't taken care of his sins. And that would give Satan a, a foothold. But you say, how do, we, how do we stop sin? The main thing is, we realize sins are destructive. Now the ways to stop sin. First, we realize sins are destructive. Second, we realize God loves us and our life is precious. We only live once. And you can do great things for God. Every one of you, can you say that to the next person next to you? You can do great things for God. You can bless many people. You can be lifted up by God to a high level. Now don't think that someone ministering in a high level or have high level of spiritual life has to be someone very special. It can be an ordinary person. If the person really dedicated to God, and really sees that sins are destructive, and God is so good. So, number two is that we realize our life is so precious, God loves us, so we want to treasure our life. And the key to overcoming sin is, any time we have a sinful thought appear in our mind, immediately we say, this is destructive. Immediately we face it and say no to it. Now, I have a five steps to victory. Five steps to victory. You can write down the five steps to victory to overcome sin. First, aware. A-W-A-R-E. Aware. Aware I have a sinful thought. Aware. A person might have lust. Aware means being conscious. Know that, oh, there is some lust, some anger. That's number one. Number two, destructive. Believe that is destructive. Any kind of sin is destructive. Number three, what does the Bible say? And then we obey the Bible. What does the Bible say about this? Number four, pray for forgiveness and strength. So we pray to God for forgiveness and for strength so that we can have strength to face the sin. And number five, choose to obey. I choose to obey. Even when there is money that doesn't belong to me, even if it's a million dollars, when someone offers you, you know, have you seen people email send you and then say, I offer you 100, a uh, 1 million dollar, 1.5 million, a few million dollars. Have you seen those emails? Because they are tempting you. They know that people have lust, have greed. So we say, I choose not to listen to those people. I know they're cheating. I choose to say no. Even when I see a very pretty girl, or a very handsome man, a very, a very rich man, I don't want to use my way to chase after the person. Or if I have a chance to retaliate to someone I don't like, I don't want to do it. When someone mistreats me, I want to pray for the person to bless the person. So the point is, stop the sin when we have the thought. For instance, your husband or wife is not nice to you. Immediately, I'm aware we have anger. Second, it's destructive. Three, what does the Bible say? The Bible says, bless those who persecute you. Bless those who curse you. And number four, pray for forgiveness because I have had anger and pray for strength. And then number five, I choose to smile and choose to be nice. But inside us, we have a voice saying, if you are nice to him, you're losing something. 
that is the voice of our sinful nature and the voice of Satan. The word is saying, I follow God, that's the best thing. Have you had those boys talking to you and say, I cannot just give in to the person. I cannot be nice to the person. Have you had voices like this in your heart? So we have to say, that is not from God. The voice of God is to forgive and bless. And the way to forgive people is have compassion on them. People who give us a hard time, they have been hurt by people many times. They've been yelled by people many times, therefore they yell at people. So we say, they, this person has a, you know, a problem in this life. And he has to face God, so he, is, he has a terrible life. I want to bless him. I want to have compassion on him and forgive him. Then you have victory. Let me tell you, in order for us to be pleasing to God, we have to take care of this sin. And then, when you take care of this sin, you feel free and joyful. And then, for men, if you are in the temptation to watch some pornography, immediately you say, this is destructive. I'm aware. This is destructive. And what does the Bible say? That we live in a, I live a holy life and ask God forgiveness. And then stop it. Stop it right away. Turn away right away. But many men will say, let me finish it this time. To, tomorrow I'll, I'll, I'll overcome it. Tomorrow there will be another excuse, right? So in order to overcome any sin or lust or anger or greed, we stop it right away because every sin will leave a mark in our life. Even though God forgives us, it will leave a mark in our life. It will destroy our life. Has our life been destroyed by many sins already? Has there been destruction of many sins already? If you want to really follow God and be raised up to a high level, I thank God God is raising me up to a high level. I'm not being proud. I'm saying I was weak when God chose me. I was sinful when God chose me. But when I experience God, I really thank God and I want to submit to God. And God honored them. And God raised me up. But I did not learn all this right away. With time, I gradually learned it. Every time I sin, I offend God. And I, got, I make God unhappy. And I can destroy the plan of God in my life. So immediately, I will take care of the sins. Immediately, I will obey God. Do you want to do this? If you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, if you want God to really bless your life, God will bless your life. God knows who loves Him. God knows who loves Him. There, you know, there are people, let me tell you another story of people who saw me before they met me face to face. There was one couple that was considering coming to visit my church in Hong Kong. That was years ago. And the woman, she prayed, I mean, she was sleeping at night, and then she had a dream. At that time, I was serving in a Lutheran church. In the Lutheran church, there was two candles in the church. And she saw two candles in the church, in a dream. And she was curious, why does the church have candles? And then she came to the church and saw the candles. And then she came home, and then the husband asked her, is the pastor bald? And she said, how do you know? He said, I saw him in a dream last night. So both of them saw me. And this husband heard from God many times. It was him who told me, one day you go to different nations. And it came true. So I'm saying, God can speak to different people to confirm that he's pleasing, he's pleased with you. That he likes your life when you submit to God. Do you want to submit to God? Yes. And that woman later became a minister. When she took me to her hometown, and I prayed for a family member to get healed, the experience of the Holy Spirit, and their spiritual life was changed, and I asked her, do you want to serve God? You can have the power of God. And she was willing. And this has happened many, many times to me. So, first thing, you want to reveal the Holy Spirit, we must say no to sins. And the way to say no to sin is when the sin appears. Well, sometimes people don't think that it's sin to worry. Is worry a sin? Yes. 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 Anything not our faith is sin. So when we worry, when we doubt, when we are unhappy, when we are depressed, but you might say how to overcome depression. I will talk about that tomorrow or day after tomorrow. Okay. Number two. 
to be filled with the Holy Spirit, okay? To continually fill the Holy Spirit. First is to repent and turn away from sin. It's not just repent, turn away from the sin. Number two, read the Bible and believe it and obey it. It's very important. Now many people, they are filled with the Holy Spirit and they will say, I have the experience already. I like that experience. I don't need to read the Bible. And many preachers, when they preach on the Word of God, they just say a few sentences about the Bible verse. They never go in depth. They always talk about stories, experiences. You know, we preach the Word of God. We want to explain to people about the Word of God. Explain to people the truth. So we need to read the Bible. And in the Bible, also find out the good nature of God. God is full of mercy, full of kindness. His, holy, His holiness is beautiful. So read the Bible and meditate on it and remember it and live it out. And then every day you have confidence. Because God says, with, with the power given to me by Jesus Christ, I can do all things. I can do all things by Christ who empowered me. I can do all things. And I can trample, I have authority to trample on snakes and scorpions because the Bible says so. And the Bible says that when we love God, what God prepared for us is what eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and the mind has not thought of, that He has prepared so many beautiful things for us. So we believe. And I totally believe when I seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, all these things will be added to us. And I believe in my heart that God treasures our life. God treasures your life. God treasures each one's life. If you treasure a life, then you repent and turn away from sin and read the Bible. And third, faith in God. Faith. Faith in His love. Faith that He wants to fill you. When you pray, don't say, God, where are you? Where are you? I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Where are you? Instead, you say, God, I know that. You are very happy with me. You want to fill me with the Holy Spirit. Yesterday we talked about Zephaniah 3.17. That He rejoices over you. He will comfort you with His love. And He will rejoice over you with singing. So God is very, very happy. So I believe that. Faith is believing in the promises of God. When God promised, I believe. And I trust in Him. When God works, yesterday I told you the definition of faith that, I, that God has given me. When God promised, I trusted Him. When God works, I trusted Him. And I don't have to worry. So when God says, He's very happy with His people, especially when His people come to Him. I believe when I pray to Him. So when I pray to Him, I just say, Lord, I know that you're very happy with me. You're blessing me. You're filling with me with the Holy Spirit. And I can enjoy you. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, it's, it's not saying, some people think faith is, I'm trying to change God. God, please, 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 please give me what I need. Give me, give me the infill the Holy Spirit. Give me money. Give me a good wife. Give me everything. We don't have to do that. Because God is more gracious than that. God has a wonderful plan in our life. So have faith all the time. Even when we have a hard time. Even when someone persecutes you. Let me tell you. I have been persecuted by different people. I have been persecuted by traditional church where I was in. But God opens a way again now. The church, the traditional church I was in, in Hong Kong, saw my writing and then they said they want to print a book joyful victory they asked me for the permission to write a book and i pray for the last two days god moves me to go to the leader and talk with him and see if it's open for me to go and help them help the denomination so god is opening the way again so what i mean is even when i'm under persecution I believe God is helping me, and I believe God is, has everything in control. I don't have to worry. Do you walk like this? God is blessing me. God is helping me. God is loving me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Can you live like that? Instead of saying, God, I need money. Oh, I'm in pain. 
I always believe God gives us the best. Now, some Christians say, no, I'm in trouble. My family is a lot of fights. We have to repent and say, where have we done wrong in the family? When people have problems in family, it's usually, you know, we have done something wrong. The other person has done something wrong, and we have done something wrong. There's a problem ministry. We want to examine ourselves and ask God for forgiveness. And look in our lives. Have we destroyed the plan of God? If we follow God, God will bless us. You would notice around you, those people who love God, you find that the life really goes better, right? They have more joy, more peace, more blessing, and a better family, a better ministry, right? And people who complain, they always have pain, they always have difficulties, and they have problems in family and everything. Have you noticed that? So the more we are faith, the more relaxed we are. And the Bible says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, ha ha. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. That comes from faith. It's not forcing the joy to come out. I have to have joy, I have to have joy, ha ha ha. I have to have joy, ha ha. It's not like that. It's believing. We have such a wonderful God. He's blessing us all the time. Whenever I experience God in any way, whenever I experience His peace and love and joy and strength, I say, Lord, you are blessing me. You're so wonderful. Hallelujah. I can rejoice in you. Can you rejoice in that? Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> so faith is very important. Faith is very important. Faith is the key to receive. Faith basically, some people think, Faith is, I have to believe very strong. Faith is basically relaxing and say, whatever God promised, I believe. <laughs> like, if you have a very good father or mother, you will say, he promised to help me. He will help me for sure. So we believe the same for God. Actually, more, because God will always give me the best. OK? And then number four, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit, is to spend long time to worship in spirit and in truth. To spend long time. Because it takes time for us to calm down, to concentrate, to put down all the stray thoughts, to really concentrate in the Lord. It takes time to build up that habit. As I said yesterday, we start with this soul and then the spirit. The soul includes, do you remember? The soul includes what? The mind, the will, and the feeling. So my mind, the whole mind say God is good. Everything in the Bible is true. Every word of God is wonderful. So I agree with everything in the Bible. And I agree that following God is the best for us. And then the mind, the will. Yes, I give my life to God totally. My life is, belongs to God. When we, our whole life belongs to God, God will make sure things will work well with you. And then number three, the feelings. When we enjoy the food, we say, God is blessing me. Hallelujah. It's God's love. Everything we see, God's love. We see the people are nice to us. It's God's love. We see everything good come to us. We experience the Holy Spirit. It's God's love. So I feel good. Let me ask you, is there anyone on earth who are close to God in their goodness? Is there anyone in the world that is close to God in their goodness to you? No. So do you think the people who are nice to you, your wife, your husband, are they nice to you? They're nice to you. But God is much more nice, right? Much nicer. So should we always say, God, I like you, I like you. Can you can you do this with me? Do it from the heart and with action. God, I like you, I like you. Can you do this? God, I like you, I like you. Can you say it with feeling? God, I like you. God, I like you. I like you more than anything. I like you more than anyone. I love you. I love you. I love you. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Always say, God, I like you. I love you. There is no 
everyone here, don't use money to encourage people to give. Just say, when you give with a loving heart to God, when you love God, God is very happy, and God will bless you. We don't have to say, you give one dollar, you get one hundred dollars back, you, you get, get something back. Don't 
do this. But just say, God will be pleased with you, and God will remember, and He will reward you richly, and His reward is beyond your imagination. It's far better. So people don't set eyes on money. Because some people set eyes on money. They always say, when will I get the money I have given? <laughs> they always look for money. And actually, sometimes, God has prepared for us sometimes to suffer. But when we suffer, we know that God has a plan. It doesn't oh. matter when we suffer. It doesn't matter. So, you know, it's given to us not only to believe in Jesus, but also to suffer for Him. So we don't just look for money. But God will provide for us so we can bless more people. But when we set our eyes on money, it can. Now, it's called prosperity. The, the teaching of prosperity. Now, I, I teach also God will bless you. But what's the difference? The difference of the teaching of prosperity is set the eyes of people on money and what you get. We don't set the eyes on that. We set the eyes on God. We don't set the eyes on the money we'll get. God will bless us. Whatever, he, whatever way He blesses us is great. It doesn't have to be money. You understand the difference? God will bless us, but don't set the eyes on money because then the person will be filled with greed. Some people do ministry for money. Have you seen that? When they have eyes on money, you know that it can bring destruction. Okay? So when we want to have a heart of love God, love people, when we see people, always want to bless people. When you come to me, I always want to help. And actually, I want to say this. After this, for people who really want to serve God better, you can communicate with me. You can communicate with me. But don't send me, good morning, how are you? How's your wife? How's your ministry? Don't send me messages like that. Just tell me what, you, what help you need. And uh, like spiritually, what help do you need? How can I help you? So that time, if you want to serve God more, I can help you. I'm happy to help you. And I'm looking for people who can bring this teaching to other people, to teach other people. But your life must be right with God. If your life is not right with God, then, then you cannot teach. You have to be right with God. Then you start to teach. So have the heart to love God and love people and to preach the gospel and help people to grow spiritually. And then number six, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Laying on of hands and spirit-filled meetings are helpful. Laying on of hands are helpful. It's helpful. The people I lay hands on you, actually when we have time, I will lay hands on more people. These last three days, I try to lay hands on more people. But it's more important, and also the pastors here can lay hands on you. And it's more important that you keep the anointing. And I want to say this, when we lay hands on people, it's important to draw the attention to God. Now, I always, when I pray for people, I always say, God is loving us, and we love God. Hallelujah, God is loving us. God is here, God too is blessing us. Instead of just setting eyes on power. Now, some people pray like this, fire, fire, power, power, anointing. The eyes is on fire, power, anointing. We want to set eyes on Jesus. We say, Jesus is here. Jesus is blessing us, right? Some people can just be seeking anointing and power. When you have Jesus, you have everything, right? Hallelujah. I hope you don't mind when I say something that you are doing. I hope you don't mind. And also when you lay hands on people, don't push. And also, if they experience the Holy Spirit, don't get proud. Now, it's normal to be happy, but when we're happy, we say, God, is your work. Always say, it's your work. Hallelujah, praise God. It's your work, it's your work, it's your work. Glory to God, glory to God. Don't take the glory. If we take the glory, we're canceling everything we do, right? So you can tell, distinguish a false prophet from someone who really follows God, right? Some people just, they want pride. They want everyone to look at them and see how anointed they are. But we want to look at Jesus. People to say, Jesus is wonderful. Now let me say this. Do not just accept anyone laying hand on you. 
If people have sins, if people have lust, if people have witchcraft, don't receive the laying of hands. Don't just go to anyone. Your pastor, you know them, so you can accept the laying of hands. But for outsiders, you have to know them because the Holy Spirit also created, you know, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit also created the angels. And some of the angels fell and became evil spirits. And an evil spirit in some way is similar to the Holy Spirit, except that it doesn't bring love and joy and peace and holiness. It brings evilness. But it's similar in a way it can be passed by laying on the hands. So don't just accept anyone. And don't think that people have a big church necessary of following God. No. Okay? So laying your hands at uh, spirit-filled meetings are helpful. And then number seven, to manage our life is very important. If a person is angry all the time, frustrated all the time, he will not be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will be filled with anger and frustration. So every day, especially when you experience the joy, keep it. So when you have the joy of the Lord all day long, hallelujah, praise the Lord. <laughs> now you don't have to laugh in front of people, but you have the joy flowing inside. Jesus is so wonderful. Jesus is so good inside the heart. Then whenever we notice any sin, any negative emotion, immediately we can take care of it. Because when a person lives in the peace of God, in the joy and the love of God, then we will sense the presence of anything negative, any sinful thought, any kind of sin, any frustration, we'll notice, and then we want to take care of that right away. Because we want to treasure our life. Do you want garbage to come into your life? No. Garbage is no good. Because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So people in the world, a lot of time when they speak, they speak words of garbage that hurt people. So we don't want to swallow those garbage. We want to say no. But we don't have to tell them. We just don't take. And we want to be nice to them. And we want to be nice to them to change them. Okay? So these are the seven points for us to pay attention to be filled with the Holy Spirit. So tomorrow if you do an assignment, you can write this down. So number one, repent and turn away from the sins. Number two, read the Bible, believe the Bible, and live out the Bible. And number three, faith that God loves us. God wants to fill us with the Holy Spirit. God wants us all to have a close relationship with Him and serve Him. And number four, worship in spirit and in truth for a long period of time, as long as you can. Even when you're walking, when you are doing dishes, when you are cooking, all the time in your heart you say, Hallelujah, thank you Jesus, I love you Jesus, I love you Jesus. in the infilling of the Holy Spirit and your life would for sure be different because Jesus said the branches they are in me I am also in him and they will bear much fruit because without me you can do nothing and then number five is to obey the great commandment and the great commission and number six the laying of hands and spirit filled meetings are helpful so in your praise and worship, now when you're very excited, I notice some people, they, they dance like this. <laughs> Instead, close your eyes. Oh, Jesus, I love you, I love you. With the heart dancing. Not just physical. Some people just physical. Watch me, watch me. It's just physical. It's inside. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's from the Spirit. Try to do that. And then the worship leader, I encourage you, not just sing, but in between a song, you can say, Oh, hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And then we can also tell people, Jesus is right here now. 
Let us open our heart to worship Him, to love Him, to adore Him, and to accept Him and believe He's blessing us now. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Always draw attention to Jesus and God the Father. So people concentrate in God in the worship, not just to the song. Sometimes people just like the song. They're singing songs. They're not really singing to God. And then handle, manage you know, our life, okay? Any question about this? Not related to what we talked about? Yes, please. Come quickly. Whenever you have a question, you don't have to raise for me. Just rush up to the front and then ask the question. Praise the Lord. How do we say uh, laying of the hand? We should be careful of those who lay our hand, our, their hands on us. How do we know to speak? That's my question. You mean you lay hands on people, people lay hands? No, the men of God lay hands. How do we know the right person, the genuine men of God that will lay hands on us? How do we know them? Yeah, how do we know them? Okay. Now you are coming from China now. We don't know you before. Okay. You are just, this is my first time seeing you. How do I know you got the right one? Okay. One of the hand on me. Okay. 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 Now, for me, you can hear from my teaching. Yeah. And you can also watch my teaching yeah. online. You look for Pastor Yip, YIP. You can see many of my teachings. There are many in Chinese, but also many in English. And also in different African languages too. English translated to different languages. Many in Kiswahili. So you can watch the person's life. And then when I pray for people, you can tell from the experience of the people that they were experiencing peace and love and joy. So those are the fruit of the Holy Spirit that you can see. Now, but then for some of you who don't know, now, first you know me because you know me through uh, Pastor Emmanuel, and Pastor Emmanuel know me through some other pastors, uh, like Pastor Gosson in Liberia. And so they have known me because there's a line of pastors who have received me and they all have testimonies, testimonies about my ministry. So you can know me. So, uh, but then for some other pastors that you want to know more before you accept the thing in our pants. Okay? Yes, come quickly. Thank you for the teachings. I want to ask, you said um, we need to spend more time in the presence of the Lord. I want to know, are there some components that we that is meant to make up that time? Or is it just one only thing? Like me, the thing that normally takes my time is before I come out every day or before I go to bed, I normally read five chapters of the Bible. I finish my Bible every year. So the reason of the Bible takes my is one cool hour. Before I come out, I just want to just only worship. I just, it just, is it just only worship, worship, worship as well? Only one thing, or I just some good praises, singing prayers, and all that is. I want to know from you. Tell me what he said. Okay, okay. Now I didn't hear what he said. Okay, is there components, other activities that I'm working in that quiet time? Now, let us see with Almighty God. Now, we still read the Bible as we have quality time with our God in our private time. Oh, yes. Very important in our private time and the time together. But when we are together with other people, we are also worshiping from the heart. Now, there are concentrated time that we are concentrating worshiping and praying to God. But there are also other times when we are walking, when we are cooking, that at the same time we can be loving God at the same time too. So do both. Yeah, answer your question. I, I don't know if I can do a question. Did I guess your question? Oh yeah, yes, of course, of course. Yes, that's my second point. The Bible. Know the Bible and love the Bible and obey the Bible. Live on the Bible, of course. And, and also in the worshiping God, also we can meditate on the, on the Bible verses too. For instance, you meditate on the verse that God has promised me blessings that my eyes have not seen. So I know God really wants to bless. Come out. So meditate on the verses. So seek first the kingdom of God. Am I seeking the kingdom of God? So we can examine ourselves. 
Amen. So my, my question is not on the teaching. My question is, do you have put down these things in book? This we are teaching. We have all these things. I have documents I given to him already, but I will keep writing. And then for some of you who are leaders, who are pastors, can have a group. You form a group, and then I will send the documents there. But then reduce other communication. It's mainly how to help. Okay? Now, I'm going to move on with the little time we have about how to use this for evangelism and raising up people's spiritual life when we experience the Holy Spirit. So first we need to experience the Holy Spirit. And how can we use it for evangelism? Basically it's like this. I have a method called experience God evangelism. You can write this down. Experience God evangelism. Experience God evangelism. That means we help people to experience God and then bring them to Jesus. And the way to do it, number one, build up relationship with people. Build up relationship. Talk with people, listen to them, respond to their needs, respond to what they're happy about, it was spent, respond to the, the burdens, everything. Just build up relationship and listen to them and respond to the difficulties by agreeing with their fears. Now, I'm not agreeing that they are doing the right thing. I'm agreeing that in a situation they are not happy, for instance. Someone said, oh, I'm very unhappy because my family has a lot of problems. We agree, yes, I know, it's difficult. In your family, it's difficult. We agree. So we have empathy. And then, so we listen and build up the relationship. And the next point, so first is relationship and also responding to the feelings. Number two, we can share we had similar problems before, or someone has similar problems before, and they were helped by God. For instance, he had burdens. He has family problems. Then you can share you have similar problems, and then you were helped by God. How God help us. And then, number three. Number two is we share that we had similar experience or someone else has similar experience, that, and then we got help from God. So first is build a relationship and listen to the problems or needs. Now not everyone tells us a problem, but if they do tell us their problems, then we agree. Yes, I know in your situation is very difficult and you will feel unhappy, you will feel painful. And then number two, after we finish listening, then we can say, I had similar problem before too or someone has similar problem before too. And then I experienced the Holy Spirit. And then I was set free. And I, now I have joy and I have peace. So with this method of evangelism, we need to build up the relationship with God and build up the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We need to build up the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And then number three, we invite a person, do you like me to pray for you? Now, so it's important for you to take care of your sins and any evil spirit inside, if you have any. Because if you lay hands on people, if you have, if you, every day you have depression or you have evil spirit attacking you, then you don't lay hands on people. But if you find that your life is clean, uh, basically clean, it's that you really try your best to keep a holy life and you, we ask for forgiveness for any sin and daily have a close relationship with him. And then you can have your pastor check you to make sure that you're okay. And then you can start laying hands on people. So you invite them. Would you like me to pray for you? And then in the prayer, try not to say many things, but to say, oh, Jesus is here blessing us. It's like the prayer I say. Jesus is blessing us. Jesus loves us. Jesus wants to give us eternal life and wants to bless our life. Jesus wants to take away our burdens. And then after the prayer, we ask, ask the person, please keep your eyes closed. Now say, write this down. Please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during the prayer? Write this down. 
this is what you say. After you pray for the person, please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during the prayer? Now why keep the eyes closed? Because if he opens his eyes, he might be distracted and forget about the experience. So you ask him, please keep your eyes closed. Have you experienced anything during the prayer? Now sometimes people cannot describe it. Sometimes you can tell by the look. And, but you can ask them, did you experience anything in the heart and over the body? And if the person still is not sure, then you can say, did you experience any peace? Burdens go away? Any joy or comfort to the body? And if you, that's what the Bible verses are for. This morning we talked about the Bible verses, how people experience God, okay? Those verses, this morning I gave you already. So you ask them, and then he said, I feel very peaceful. They will say John 14, 27. Then Jesus said, peace I give to you. And then if the person says, some burdens go away. Then you say, that's what Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight. All you who are weary and burdened, come to me and I'll give you rest. So God has blessed you like this. Would you like Jesus to continue to bless you? If the person is willing, then you tell him about the gospel of Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ is the Son of God, as prophesied in the Bible, he came to the world to manifest himself to be the Son of God and have the power of God. And he, but then he was crucified for our sin so that we can be forgiven. And, and then he rose from the dead and ascended to heaven. And one day he'll come back. And when you trust in Jesus as a Savior, you'll have eternal life. Do you want Jesus to bless your whole life? So when you experience the Holy Spirit right then, you ask Him, do you want Jesus to continue to bless you? And then you invite the person to say the prayer with you. The prayer like this. You can say it with me. Now close your eyes. Close your eyes now, please, and say it with me. Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus, thank you that you work during the prayer. That you work during the prayer. That you gave us some peace, and the burdens go away, and give us comfort, and take away our burdens. Thank you for your wonderful work. And we know that God is real. Please forgive our sins. I know that you are a son of God. And you have the authority to forgive us and give us eternal life. Welcome Jesus into my heart to forgive my sins and give me eternal life. And trust, I trust in Jesus as my Savior. And I want to follow God. I want to love God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we can lead the person in the prayer. And then we ask them, have you sincerely prayed that prayer? If he has, then we tell them. If you sincerely ask God to forgive you and give you eternal life, then you are saved. And then you can start to follow God. So that's how I bring people to Christ. But I also do many other things. But this is one way to help people experience the Holy Spirit. And then, when I pray for them, and then I say, do you want to bless people one day? You can pray for people and they can experience God also. And you can bring healing. You can comfort many, many people's hearts. Do you want to do that? And then so right when I bring them to Jesus, I encourage them that one day you can bless other people. So I and encourage them to come back. And I tell them how to follow God. And then I will follow through with them and know that they are following God. And some people respond very well. And I continue to raise them up to train them to be serving God. So this is how I do evangelism and how I raise up people to serve God. That when people experience God, and then I ask them, isn't that wonderful that you experience God? Do you want God to continue to bless you? Do you want to be used by God to bless other people? And then I will observe the person. And I will talk with the person. Also train other people to, to follow up with the person. 
And if the person continues to love God and is willing to serve God, then I will raise them up to be serving God. So I will be observing the people in my congregation and also people who come for my help, and then I will raise them up to serve God. And some people observe that they really have the heart to follow God. They really want to obey God. They, they want to love God. And when I notice that, then I will pay more attention to these people to raise them up spiritually. This is how I raise up people. And also some people have a gift to teach. And then I will encourage them to share. And then I will tell them, one day you can also do teaching to other people. Now this is another big area, how to raise up people to serve God. And with my members, I often, um, many times I will pray for them, lay hands on them every time I see them. Sometimes I don't because of time, but I will ask them how the relationship with God is and how are they handling the sins and the problems and in whatever way they have served the Lord or, or helped someone to believe in Jesus or strengthened someone's spiritual life, I will ask them to share to encourage other people. And some of these people respond very well. They would go and reach out to people and do evangelism. And they tell me. And then I say, you're wonderful. You can be used by God greatly. And some people would go and pray for different people. And there was one person who came to me for, uh, to have demons driven out. And I drove out the demons from, from her. And then she would, her life totally changed. And then she, she has a little shop in Hong Kong to sell clothing. And then in her shop, she always tell people about Jesus. And she prayed for people in the shop. Many times I went there, she was talking about Jesus. She was uh, broadcasting Christian message in the shop. And God is blessing her. And, and I've seen people like this. And, and then I would train them to serve God. So for instance, Pastor Gosson, I notice that he remembers my teachings. So I have the heart to raise him up to teach other people, to train people. So I always observe who have the heart to follow God and who have the gifts to help people. Now, some people, they want to help uh, everyone serve God in a different level. We all can greet people, welcome people, and then we can help people spiritually. We can pray for people. And then some people can strengthen other people's spiritual life. They can start to serve God in church. They start to share messages in the church. And then some people can start to train people. So I would observe different people have different gifts. And I would train them accordingly to build them up, fill up the spiritual life. And I give them a lot of positive feedback. Whenever I have any suggestion to them, I always say, you're doing very well. And you're doing very well. I have some suggestion for you. And I hope you can take it. It's for your good. And then I will tell them. And then if they respond well, I'll say, Thank God, thank God that you listen to me. And then you will, you will improve, you will go higher and higher. So I always give positive feedback. So the people enjoy serving God with me. They like serving God with me because I always encourage them. And I always give them opportunities. When they experience anything, I always ask them to share. For instance, this pastor here, he shared about his special experience. I think it's very encouraging to people. So I videotaped him just now in the break time. And then I will share with people to say, we can all go higher in the spiritual level. So that's a special gift he has. And he can go higher, you can go higher. One day you might go to heaven. There was, there was one person I prayed for. I drove out demons from her. And then she started to hear from God. And then she went to heaven a few times. And I have it. You can look for it. You can look for heaven and then Pastor Yip. You can see her testimony in Chinese and then I interpret it into English. It was uh, just, you know, when I saw her, she was a very weak Christian and having evil spirit. And now she is serving God with joy and zeal. My main ministry, I always pray for people who are healed. But my main ministry is to help people to be filled with the Holy Spirit so you can serve God. That's more important than healing. Yes. Now many meetings, people come for healing. I will pray for them. 
But I'm ready to pray for the infilling of the Holy Spirit because you keep the anointing, you can be used by God. That is much more important. When you have the anointing, you also receive healing. Yes. Many healings, they receive anointing, they also have healing. So I don't want to concentrate in the sick. 